Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. You're not in the wrong place, it's me, it's Amy, and I am here with this fabulous wig. Now, if you haven't seen my wig video, be, be sure to check that out. But I just filmed it and I decided, we'll shoot. Let's leave it on and let's see how it feels over time, right? And so I'm gonna do this video in the wig, ooh la la. Now, I, I've got some of my kids here are at home with me at the moment and I have shown them and I don't think that they would be okay going out in public with me wearing this wig. Now I think that it's pretty, okay? But they did also comment on how tall it is on my head. But I think that's just kind of the nature. Well, I have a big head, so that's probably part of it, but it is a very thick cap up here. But anyway, so I've taken some pictures <laughs> in this wig and sent them to my family chat so that this will be memorialized forever. But anyway, I thought we would do this next video. I was going to do it all together until I remembered I had to send the wig video to get pre-approved before posting it. And I thought it might be kind of wigged, wig, kind of weird to do a wig video this in the same video as this. So anyway, I will will go all decked out today while we do go visit some other country. But one of my kids did say I look like I was now back in the 80s. So so yeah, I don't feel like this is quite right for 80s. I feel like this at least gets me back to the 70s, right? <laughs> but anyway, I feel like the 80s they had big hair, but it was there was more perms, right? That was my experience in the 80s. All right, so today we are going to do a Yum Yum box. And if you've not ever watched any of my Yum Yum boxes, I do have a playlist of these. Basically, we are going to go take a trip to another country and try out a bunch of snacks. They typically have a, a mix of sweet and savory snacks in this box. This is the medium level box of the ones that Universal Yums offers. I pay for this with my own money because my family loves this box and we like to sit around and try everything together after I've tried it with you guys. So they don't know I exist, but I am here with another. We've already been to several countries. When you do, if you sign up for this, and there's information in my description below, for, I've got a referral code. Anybody that signs up for this gets a referral code. So it's that kind of thing. But if you use my referral code, we both get something. So that's down below. But when you get your first box, you will get a passport that you can then put your stamps from where you've been. So, so far we've been to the Czech Republic, to Germany, to Scandinavia. So see, some of them are um, well, around the world. That had multiple countries in it. Then we had France, the Baltics, so that was multiple countries, and Thailand was the last one. So I don't know where we're going this month, but we shall see. So let's get it open. Ukraine, well isn't that fitting? Fitting for the times. So you get a card like this that tells you a little bit about the country and then you get a scoreboard. So when I do this with my family, we go through and we rate things from one being terrible, five being fantastic. We each rate it and one of the kids will do hashtags and then at the end we'll see what the most popular snack was. Um, you can also identify then to what the worst one was that has the fewest and then we usually go around and say which what was the weirdest thing so some of these may seem familiar to snacks that we get in the states because obviously we get a lot of snacks in the states from other countries but I'm hoping that we'll find some that are kind of unique and then you also get a booklet this booklet will tell you all about the snacks that are in the box and I'll be reading 
that information for you on these snacks. And then there's always a trivia section if you wanna learn more about the Ukraine in this case. There's always a recipe page if you want to create some authentic recipes from that country. And, oh, they're talking about how they got how they got the snacks out, you know, given the war. So that's interesting. And then this one's got coloring page. And then in the back, it's got all the nutrition facts. So like I was saying, they have three, three levels of boxes. This is the medium one. The small one has fewer snacks, obviously. And then there's a larger one. It usually has a beverage in it, like a can of something that's unique to that area. But the medium one, we decided that we really weren't needing um, that much, right? And most of our family doesn't drink soda. So a lot of times it was a soda. So that seemed like a, a waste. But then they give you stickers. So we're gonna put our Ukraine stamp in our passport. And I think that if you were to do this long enough, they know, then they would send you a new, a new book, I believe. But don't quote me on that because I haven't got that far myself. So I don't know exactly how that works. All right, so you get your stamp put in. And then there's also places on here to, to rate things too, to write down what the weirdest and all that stuff. We, we never do that because I keep this book down here so it's not around. But then you get the flag. I've been seeing this flag watching the Olympics. And then there's also a flower. So you get to build a garden on the back of your passport. So there we go. So we are on box number eight. That's crazy. All right, so let's find the book because we like to, I like to go in order. And I could see if you wore this all day long, it seems like you might get a headache. But maybe, do you build up a tolerance to that if you wear wigs all the time? I mean, it doesn't hurt, it's more like pressure. Okay, let's get started. So first we have homemade bread chips with Ajika, A-D-J-I-K-A. -A. Oh, great. Fried rye chips with Ajika seasoning. Okay, I hate rye. <sighs> okay, <laughs> many countries have a favorite condiment. The U.S. has ketchup, no mayo. Italy has pesto, Mexico has salsa, and Ukraine, they have ajika. I wish I knew how to pronounce that. This mildly spicy sauce is made with carrots, tomatoes, garlic, and chili pepper, which that doesn't sound bad, and serves as an accompaniment to, well, pretty much anything. It's slathered on bread, poured into soup, drizzled atop vegetables, mixed into scrambled eggs, and most commonly paired with meat. In fact, the name Ajika comes from the word for salt, which should give you an indication of how pervasive the condiment is. See if you can taste the spices. There's basil, paprika, chili, garlic, bay leaves. I don't know what bay leaves taste like because, you know, they always tell you you have to take the bay leaves out of the stuff that you're cooking. So I don't, I don't know what is uniquely bay leaf, right? Um, but those are the spices that make up the distinctive pungent flavor. Then see if you agree with this statement, my new favorite condiment. Well, it's gonna be kind of hard for me to say because I don't like rye, but okay. So anyway, it comes in a thing that looks like this. And they tell you a little bit. I mean, it's a standard packaging kind of thing. And 
I like all of those ingredients that they said for the spice mix. Yeah, I think, is it caraway seeds that are in rye? And we know I do not like caraway seeds. We've had an episode with that before and it was disgusting. Okay, so this is just for packaging purposes. They come in an actual plastic bag. Not sure what happened to my scissors. Oh, there they are. I feel like because I've got hair in my face, I almost feel like I have hair in my mouth, but I don't, but it kind of feels that way. So it's like Melba toast. Really crunchy. Really salty. Okay, so for one thing, it doesn't taste like rye at all to me. It's actually tolerable. And hold on, I need to get my water closer to me. Oh, actually, no, I've got a drink here. So it's crumbly, so it was kind of getting stuck in my throat. But the flavor is really not bad. Now, can I? Okay, you can kind of taste the garlic. I don't know about the paprika. I'm not a good connoisseur of paprika. I mean, I like it on my deviled eggs, but I don't know that I eat it much anywhere else. You kind of get some tang from the tomato, because there's tomato on this. I don't know, it's interesting. It's, it's actually not bad, I could see I could see being, I could see getting stuck and eating a whole bag of these, which is kind of weird for me to say. But yeah, the rye, the rye really doesn't taste like rye. So what is it? For those of you that are more knowledgeable about rye bread, does it sometimes not have the seeds in it? Because maybe I just don't like rye bread because the rye bread I've had has the seeds in it but maybe you can get it without the seeds and then it's just a brown bread? Is that how it works? I could ask the Google, but I'm not gonna. But anyway, this is actually not bad. Um, it, it was flavorful and it was salty, but not too salty. So I would give this, this is kind of surprising me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a four, <laughs> believe it or not. I try to, if you've not watched one of these before, if it's something I feel like I could get around here, it's usually a three, unless I just think it's absolutely great, and then I'll go up. But I got to be careful. So I, when I'm doing this, I'll give like half numbers and stuff just because I don't know what all is coming. And I always try to make sure to tell you at the end what my favorite thing was. But anyway, this was not bad. So I'm going to, I'm going to give it a four just because I think it's kind of original or unique. I don't really feel like I could get this around here and it was not bad. All right, next, oh no, golden chips wasabi. Can you handle Ukraine's longest snack? You may not think of Ukrainian cuisine as spice heavy, but we're here to challenge that perception. Great. <laughs> Ukrainians can seriously handle their spice. Exhibit A, one of the most popular alcoholic drinks, Horilka. Horilka, well, that's how it's spelled. I don't know how it's pronounced. 
literally burning water, is often infused with red hot chili peppers. Exhibit B, this yum. These long, let's see if I can find it. These long rectangular chips might appear delicate and thin, but don't be fooled. They're speckled with an incredibly strong, ridiculously hot wasabi flavor. One flaky bite and you'll be reaching for a glass of water. Just make sure it's not burning water. All right. Oh, I'm not a spicy person. I don't, I don't know. I tried, I've said this before. I tried being a spicy person when I was in college and I could kind of tolerate it then. But then when I started, um, like gaining weight and stuff, I couldn't handle it because of the acid reflux. I mean, you know, plus size people tend to have acid reflux and that's like not good with spicy things. Now, some of you may totally disagree, but that's okay. All right, so, so yeah, and I, I like horseradish. That's about as spicy as I can get on that. So wasabi, I may be crying here in a minute. Ooh. Okay. Oh, so we've had a chip similar to this from another country, only it was mushroom flavored. I'm going to try to get just a small little piece. Okay. But yeah, it's like, uh, and those were mashed potato. Is that what these are? It's like mashed, like the chip was mashed potatoes that had been flattened out to like this and then crisp up. It looks just like this, but I can't of course read it. I mean, it, this is a potato snack. So yeah, maybe this is, maybe this is like that one too. Oh. Okay, did I pull the right thing? Maybe I didn't pull the right thing. <sighs> it wasn't spicy. No, it says potato chips wasabi. Okay, well, so that was not anywhere near as, well, let me try, okay, let me try one more just in case I got a, an easy piece. Okay, here's some that's got a lot more of the green on it. Okay, spice is definitely where that green powder is, but it was all hype and no, um, it did not live up to its spice hype is what I want to say, but it's actually pretty good. It's got a wasabi flavor, but it's like it's got the flavor without the heat. It's kind of weird. So that actually was pretty good. And... I don't know. I think it kind of ties with the rye chips, so I'm going to give it a four. Being all original. All right, next we've got sponge cake with condensed milk. Let's see if I can find that. Nope, that's not it. Where is it? Oh, right here, sponge cake. It's even in English, so I, no excuse. All right, so a slice of condensed milk cream layer cake. Sometimes sweet things can come out of really dark times. This yum is proof. After World War II, Ukraine faced food shortages that forced folks to get creative in the kitchen, especially for dessert, which is where sweetened condensed milk 
comes in handy. Locals used it to stick together bits of leftover baked goods, making simple no-bake cakes. Since then, sweetened condensed milk has become a staple of Ukrainian cuisine. Now, I like a good sponge cake, so there's very few sweets I don't like, unless it's ginger. I hate ginger. Or maple. Not a big fan of maple. This is a dumb, ignorant question to ask, but do other countries... Obviously, Canada does, is very strong in the maple. Are there other countries that have strong maple? Um, okay, well, this is kind of sticking to the package, so I'm going to just try to break off a little piece. I was going to try to get it out and cut a piece off, but I'm just going to just gonna break it. Okay, so it's got kind of a cream filling. Sweetened condensed milk, right? It's almost like it's got rum. Did I say that? Did I say there was a rum flavor? No, it doesn't say anything about that, but it's kind of got a little bit of that kind of just dry. This would make a great foundation for strawberry shortcake. Replace the shortcake with one of this. Put your strawberry, your strawberry sauce concoction on it. Whipped cream. This would be great for that because it would help with the dryness of the cake. It's a soft enough cake, but it's dry. I don't feel like this is unique, very unique, so I'm going to give this a two. And because it's dry, it's kind of catching in my throat. Okay. Next is a crostata with black currant. Very delicious fruit in a crumbly cookie crust. In the scheme of fruits, black currant is fairly new. Native to Scandinavia and Russia, it's been cultivated to perfection in Ukraine's fertile climate over the past 500 years. Not so in the United States, where the cultivation of black currants was banned starting in 1911 due to a fungus that naturally occurs in the plants that can wreak havoc on America's trees and therefore the lumber industry. Well, that's, you know, sounding tasty. Fortunately, tangy and richly sweet black currant crostatas are A-OK -okay for importation. So that's interesting. I've never heard that about, well, why would I? Why would I have heard something about, about black currants having fungal issues for trees? And why doesn't it do that in other countries? Is there something about our atmosphere? Our, oh, it comes in a little, a little cake or pie thing. Okay, I do need to cut this. ever so slightly. But, um, yeah, I mean, I guess when you think about it, black currant doesn't seem like a popular flavor here. Grape, yes. Strawberry, yes. Like in jams, like I feel like black currant is like a jam flavor. I'm just going to take a little sliver of this. So the crust is pretty crumbly. I'm just going to take a little piece like this. Hmm. So the crust is pretty buttery. You do get some tang from the black currant, which is like a jam consistency on this. Well, like a baked jam. Almost like a Pop-Tart consistency for it. But it needs some salt. Like the crust needs some salt to give it some vibrancy. So it's, it's okay. 
it's not really giving me any kind of special flavor vibes. So I'll give it a three. Okay, so far this box is eh. All right, but every time I say that, then my family thinks it's fantastic. And whenever I think the box is fantastic, then they think it's disgusting. So, so that's what's good about this box. There's always somebody who likes most of it. Okay, next we've got Choco Socks. Chocolatey wafer stuffed with cookies and cream. The more we travel the world on this snack adventure, the easier it is to notice that some yums are well universal. Case in point, cookies and cream. Yes, we have seen cookies and cream in a lot of different boxes. Here's Ukraine's take on it. Smooth vanilla cream flecked with cookie pieces, smeared over a wafer and then smothered in chocolate. You've never had cookies and creams, cream like this before. We haven't. Well. I don't know. Cookies and cream is kind of boring, if I'm being honest. And it's, it's, um, I don't know. It's just, it doesn't have as much flavor in it. So anyway, it looks like this. So I'm going to take half of one of these, which is on a wafer. Well, actually, I can take the whole thing because there's still three left. So, okay. Okay. The wafer in this feels stale. because it's chewier. Now we had a chewier wafer from some other country and it's okay, but I guess I'm just used to the cheap wafers we have here in the States that are usually crispy or crunchy until they get stale. But the cookies and cream part is creamy and light but it kind of makes me wish it was not on the wafer. Like the wafer gets in the way. It adds a texture to it as you're chewing it that's like paper, papery. Because it's kind of stale. But aside from that, it was good. But again, it's not like fantastic. So I'm gonna give it a three. All right. Now we have a yum yum bag that usually has hard candies in it. If these are hard candies, then I don't know that I will. That's hard for me to try, especially now that I can't pause. Okay, what do we got here? Tricitron, Tricitron glazed sweets that look like this. Chocolatey bites with a creamy lemon filling. Lemons definitely aren't a part of traditional Ukrainian fare, but they are a part of Ukrainian innovation. A greenhouse network in a village near Kiev uses specialized thermal greenhouses to produce everything from white pomegranates, mini bananas, and do you see where we're going with this? Lemons. <laughs> The growing process isn't easy with the entire plantation submerged in the ground and divided into two unique climate zones, but it does allow for further experimentation with food. Today it's lemon chocolate, but perhaps one day we'll see white pomegranate chips in the Ukraine box. Okay, well, I like orange chocolate, so maybe lemon chocolate will be just as good. Let me see how many of these there are. So I know if I need to cut. Okay, I don't need to cut. So I'm going to just take a bite. Mm. 
Okay, so I'm kind of wondering, is this going to be like a Russell Stover's kind of thing where it's a lemon filling, a, like a chocolate coated lemon cream? It's kind of like a lemon flavored marzipan. Okay, I like this. I like the tart with the sweet. Chocolate's a little cloying, but the lemon kind of breaks that up. So yeah, this is a good one. I like this. So we've already had a four, I think. So let's make this a four and a half. And I will set it up here just in case this ends up being my favorite thing. So yeah, that was not bad. That was great. All right, next we've got Bonnie Fruit Summer Mix. It's a huge, huge bag of these. Fruit jellies with pear, apricot, and more. With incredibly harsh winters, Ukrainians had to turn pro at preserving. Over the summer, berries were traditionally boiled into a sweet jam known as something. Apricots and peaches were dried and later mixed with hot sugar water for the dessert beverage compote, compot, however you pronounce that. And the really experimental preservers focused on pickling watermelon. These extra sweet soft jelly candies made with real fruit juice are the modern form of preservation, allowing Ukrainians to enjoy summertime faves all year long. All right, so they said we have pear, apricot, and more. There's almost always some kind of a fruit jelly or a, that kind of thing in these which is great because my family likes those. But there's apples on this picture too. And well, we already said pears and apricots. Apple's really the only other fruit I see on the bag. in a little tray. Okay, so they are kind of shaped like you would expect. So I think this is like a strawberry. Got some cherries. I'm not close enough, am I? Some cherries. Green apple. This looks like a pear. I'm gonna guess this is watermelon. Oh, mate, this may be this. This is probably the apricot, maybe, or orange. I don't know. Because then we have this. This might be the apricot. All right, so I'm gonna try a couple. I'm gonna try this one in the hopes that it's watermelon, because they kind of mentioned watermelon. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, these are the super soft, like it's a jelly, it's not a, um, it's not a gummy, it's a jelly, it's a sugar coated jelly. This one was watermelon and it was excellent. I'm putting it back in here, I'm going to try a different one. Um, I think it, this is the pear. Mm. Mm. You don't taste it like it's really subtle at first, but it has a really strong flavor. Okay, this is the green apple. Mm. Okay. Mm. That one was the best. Um, I will say that 
these taste like the real fruit. They don't taste like the candied version of the fruit. So they did a really good job with the flavor in that. So I'm going to give this a four and a half. 4.6. It's better than the chocolate covered lemon. So this is my current favorite. Okay. How's my hair doing, you guys? <laughs> it's, is it hot? I don't know. I don't know that it feels hot yet. I still feel the pressure kind of like right in here. There's some pressure, but okay. Next, Delicia rolls with baked milk flavor. Um, okay. Looks like this. Ukrainian, Ukraine's eight hour milk. Preservation pros don't just stop at fruit. Stalwart Ukrainians also had to solve dairy annoying, dairy's, sorry, dairy's annoying tendency to spoil fast. Their solution, baked milk, a delicacy and common breakfast drink. Milk is slowly heated for eight hours, creating a chemical reaction and the naturally occurring amino acids and sugars that turns dairy into a creamy, caramely sensation. These crispy wafer rolls are filled to the brim with that sweet, milky flavor that's nostalgic to Ukrainians and delicious. All right. One thing about baked milk, I mean, you're kind of getting into, sorry, I feel like there's one hair in my face, but um, my nose is getting red. That's because I'm eating. But baked milk a lot of times isn't very flavorful. I mean, caramel can be, but... Okay. So there's a bunch of these in here. I'm just going to pull one out. It looks like this. Hmm. would be great with coffee but yeah it's a super crispy delicate coating on the outside and then a cream super creamy inside so yeah so that's not bad it's not as good as the jellies but it's probably as good as the chocolate covered lemon so I'm gonna give it a four and a half so yeah so it's not as bland as I was expecting you, there is a little bit more sweetness creaminess to it. All right, next we've got Polis Big Bar, 11 layer dark chocolate and almond wafer. Okay, I am going to, since my head is kind of getting hot, I'm going to take the, well, I think I'm going to take this off. Okay, just undid the S clips. Oh man, yeah, that is, okay, so that definitely does get hot. Or I should say now my head doesn't feel hot. So we'll see if that helps with my, with my nose. And my, now I've got all my flat hair. <laughs> so yeah, so I've commented, you know, on, wigs before because I was thinking about getting some Timu wigs with my as my Fishland Farmland prize because it wouldn't matter if those sold out because it takes so long to finish that but I wondered because I've only ever really done ponytails I wondered if it would feel hot and because I've got psoriasis on my scalp I wondered if that would kind of aggravate so it definitely gets hot after a while and there is some pressure, but so yeah, I don't know, but we'll see now, now that I'm 
I should have taken, I hope I got a better picture at the beginning holding this so I could still have my wig for the thumbnail, but I guess we'll see. All right. So back to this. Sorry, I was getting distracted. And I was kind of getting claustrophobic. Don't tell. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I... It's weird, right? I'm, like, I'm not trapped. But if I feel like I've got something restrictive on, I kind of freak out even if it's not... I mean, like, that took, like, a second to take off. So it's a mental thing. All right. I keep... I keep restarting this, but 11 layer dark chocolate and almond wafer. And I love almonds. I love almond flavoring specifically. Not long ago, almonds were considered an extraordinary nut in Ukraine, imported exclusively through the port city of Odessa from the Mediterranean. Today, Odessa and the surrounding region are prolific producers of almonds themselves, with production taking place at home. The nut became much more integrated in, oh wait, I didn't, I didn't pronounce my punctuation correctly. With production taking place at home, the nut became, became more integrated in Ukrainian food. Case in point, this 11 layer wafer with grated almond filling. Okay, so that sounds messy. I'm probably going to need my plate again. One big bar. All right, and then let me get my plate. Ooh. See how much of this I can dump on the floor. Let's see how easy this is to cut. It's not bad, actually. Apparently there's 11 layers. Reminds me of a a nutty bar. Those are the peanut butter wafer, chocolate covered peanut butter wafer things. If for some reason, hopefully, nutty bars. Yeah, but this of course has more layers than that. That one only has like three or four, and it's got the almond paste or shavings or whatever instead of peanut butter. And so this has a little bit more of a sweetness when you get that almond. But the wafer is really good and it's very much like the Nutty Bar. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. I think I like that better than the jellies. So this would make a nice treat. I mean, those Nutty Bars, you get two of them in a package, so this is less than that. But, um, but yeah, I like the almond. And it doesn't, I said paste, but it doesn't really taste like a paste. It's more like you just get the, saying the essence of it is not right either. There's kind of a creaminess from that part of it. But it blends in really well with the wafer, but yet the wafer is still not soft. So it, I don't know, I guess it's just matches my, like some people might like a softer wafer like that other thing we tried just a little bit ago, but I like there to be a little bit more crunch. So yeah, that one's good. And I said that was my favorite thing so far. So. Let's just give it a five. And if we end up with one of the few other things that's left being a five, then so be it. 
Okay, so let me put this where I can remember. Oh wait, was that it? Oh, I skipped an item. No, there's a couple items in here. Hold on. Here I thought I was going in order in the book, but I appeared to have skipped some things. I skipped this, which, let me see how many of those are in here. Okay, are they all the same? Okay, Chewing Sweets. Soft candy with a bubblegum flavor. Bubblegum candy probably isn't what you'd expect when you think of Ukrainian sweets. You can read more about how this yum came to be. Oh, okay, well. Okay, well, I'm not going to take the time to figure out where that was. But anyway, it does look like there's two different flavors. I'm just going to open one at random because it doesn't mention... Well, it says maybe they're maybe it's just different packaging, but but everything bubblegum flavor. Okay, it's soft, like a taffy. Let me see if I can just pinch a little piece off. Okay, well, it's definitely bubblegum flavor. But it's kind of different. It was like a really soft taffy, but not the kind of taffy that's gonna mess with any dental work you might have. So that was really good. I don't mind bubblegum flavor. I like bubblegum flavor. That was really good. I'm gonna give that a 4.75, but yeah, it was super soft. So it would probably be the kind of thing that would get hard really fast if it was left out exposed to the air. But yeah, okay, so I also I also skipped this one, which is huge. So Roshan Bubble Caramel Chocolate, an aerated caramel and white chocolate bar. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the world's largest confectioneries and the biggest in Ukraine, Roshan, Roshan, whatever, produces over 450,000 tons of treats every year, from chocolates to caramels to jellies to biscuits to cakes. The Willy Wonka-esque mastermind behind it all? Ukraine's former president, Petro Poro Poroshenko. In 1996, long before his presidency began in 2014 and ended in 2019, Poroshenko started Roshan, quickly earning the nickname Chocolate King. Here you'll taste one of the company's greatest innovations, white chocolate aerated to make tiny bubbles, creating the ultimate chocolate melting experience for your mouth. Well, I can't believe I almost skipped that because that sounds fantastic. All right. And it's huge. I always love it when I hear something fall upstairs. Like, was that a person? Was that a cat? Okay, so it looks like this. And it comes in, oh, well, I think it's, yeah, it kind of broke off a little bit. So I'm just gonna break off one of these squares if I can. Oh, yeah, it breaks pretty easily. Okay, well, aerated is right. Look at that. Mmm, well, that's a unique experience. As you're eating it, all these air holes kind of fill up, making it melt really, really nicely. Hmm. It's got a nice caramel flavor. It's um, kind of on the lighter side of caramel. 
color wise like if I were well it's obviously it's a light color here but that's because of the white chocolate but you know some some ch caramel you can be like that's a dark caramel there's a lot of body to it this one's on the lighter side plus accentuated with the white chocolate you can't I mean you get the mouth feel from the white chocolate but you really get the taste it really tastes like caramel you're not really tasting white chocolate but then what does white chocolate really taste like it's pretty bland but so this tastes really like caramel but it feels like chocolate mm. okay this is getting a five also because I feel like this is really unique and it tastes really good. So let me get that put back. I'm just going to sneak this part over here. Don't tell anybody that I kept some of that out for me. So yeah. Okay. So that's a five two. Was that it then finally? So you know what we didn't get in this box? We didn't have any potato chips, any potato. Well, we had those wasabi mashed potato things, but I think it was the Baltics that had the other one, I think. Mashed potato flaky chip kind of thing. So yeah, so what'd you guys think? Do you think this would be something you'd ever try doing? I, I try to say kind of the same things on this. These, this box is a great size to send, you know, colleges have started back up already, I think, or will be soon. This is a great kind of care package to send to your student in college. It's great for single people. I mean, you could get yourself, a, you know, a box of treats that, well, if it were me, it'd be gone in like a day or two. But, you know, people with self-restraint, self-control could make it last for a while. Um, and it's great for families to, you know, sit around and try things, new things together that you just would never try. So, yeah. So, I think overall, this was not my favorite box because a lot of the things were just kind of, eh. But this was my favorite so but but this too was also really good well there were several things that were good but yeah this is my favorite so all right well again if this is something you're there's lots of companies that do stuff like this but I feel like this company has a really good mix of sweet and savory and they have a usually a pretty good mix so that you're not you're not getting all just different flavors of potato chips or, you know, that kind of thing. Like, I feel like there's a good variety, too. So, anyway, if that's something that interests you, check out the um, description below. But I want to thank you for investing your time in this channel today, watching this. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, now I'll, if you've ever, have you ever watched any of those, like, Beard Meets, meets Food or Katina eats kilos. They're, they, of course, eat a lot on their videos and then they're, of course, belching and stuff. So I feel like I'm, you know, have stuff now that wants to air, that wants to revisit the planet. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for watching. And wherever you are, whenever you are, I hope you're having a great day. And until we meet again, take care of yourself. Bye.